Ciao friends, and welcome to a new unplugged video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to show you how to I answer to a question that appeared on one of our forums. Actually, it was another unplugged video. In the previous unplugged video, I shown with Patrick how to compute uh, the holes in sales. So you have a list of sales, you have uh, dates in which there are no sales, and you want to count one, two, three, four, the number of days that do not have any sales, resetting as soon as you have new sales. Now, among the many questions, there was one that asked uh, to compute the opposite, so to count the number of days with sales. And in order to answer, I just record this video and we write the DAX code together. But before that, let's start out the question, then we reason a bit on top of uh, the algorithm that we want to implement, and then we start writing DAX code together. Let's get started. Let's start from the question. This is the previous video that I was recording, consecutive dates, consecutive days with no sales in DAX. And I love this video because uh, the introduction was made by Patrick and I played a bit with that. But among the questions, there is one that is interesting. Let me zoom in a bit here. So Jordan asked this question, that is, uh, I'm confident many others are interested in how to create a measure for calculated consecutive dates with sales. In my mind, the solution would be something like a combination of calculating the previous date with no sales for each row and date. But we will talk about the algorithm later. Now let's take a look at uh, an example. Here I have my usual Contoso model and I have uh, all the dates and the sales amount. And you see we have a hole here. Then we start on the 2nd of January to have sales and then sales again. So my measure needs to return one and then two then resets to zero and count again, one, two, then reset again to zero and then count one, two, three, four, and so on. And of course, depending on the selection we make, the numbers need to be different. Because if I select, well, Azure doesn't have anything. Black has sales everywhere and there is only one hole, whereas blue has multiple holes and multiple islands with dates. Now, the algorithm is quite simple, but it's worth uh, describing it a bit better. So let me take a screenshot of the dates because I want to, I want to, okay. Take this part of the screen so we can draw on top of it. Okay. Let's open the snipping tool and then we start drawing a bit on top of it. Now, the idea is that we want to compute, let's use a red, one, two, and then we want again one, two, then one, two, three, four. The idea of the algorithm is this. First, we retrieve a data set, a table that contains all the dates, regardless they have sales or no sales. Our final goal will be to detect the dates with no sales, so to build a data set that contains only the dates with no sales at all. And in order to obtain that, we start, first of all, retrieving all the dates that are available. Then we create another data set that contains the dates where there are sales. So we have only, uh, let's do that here, this date, and then this date, and then this one, this one, and so on. So once I have the two data sets, one with all the dates and one with the dates with sales, I can subtract from all the dates, the dates with sales. And what remains at the end is a set that contains only the dates with no sales. So only the yellow one will survive our filter. Why is this important? Because once I have the data set with the holes, the dates with no sales, it's pretty simple to compute uh, these numbers because uh, if I'm on the 3rd of January 2018, I go searching back for the nearest hole. The nearest hole happens to be the 1st of January. Then the number of days between the 1st of January, the nearest hole, and the 3rd of January is two days, and that computes the number two. When I'm, for example, on the 11th of January, on the 11th of January, I go back searching for the previous hole. I find it here. It's the 7th of January. And then I subtract the current date from 
the nearest hole, and once I have it, I can compute my number in quite an easy way. Now that the algorithm hopefully is a bit more clear, we can start writing DAX code together one step at a time, as we always do. So my measure needs to compute first of all, well, first of all, it needs to understand where it is. So I need to find the current date, and that's kind of simple to do. Let's create a new measure, and we call it days with sale. First, as I said, I need to compute the current date. So I just uh, compute the variable reference date, and here I can just take the maximum of day date. And in order to debug the measure, it's always a good idea to start returning the temporary variables that we create, so to check step by step that we are computing something meaningful. If I place my days with sale here, that returns on the on the 5th of January, it returns the 5th of January. There's nothing fancy here, that works just fine. Then I need a table that contains all the dates that are available. And that again is simple. I can create another variable, all dates, and I just use all over date date. Uh, if I want to check the content, I cannot, of course, return the table, but I can just do a count rows of all dates just to see that there is something meaningful there. And there are 1461 dates, always the same number everywhere. Again, that is fine. Then I need to compute the number of uh, days with sales. Now, this can be done, uh, how do I name the variable? I uh, Sales date, sales dates, but actually dates with sales is better. I can use uh, values of sales order date. Now, values of sales order date returns uh, the values of the order date of the order date columns in the sales table. And I need to check the content. Dates with sales uh, is where I want to count rows. And that returns one, 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 one. That is not actually what I want because I start from all the that, all the dates and I don't want one. I want all the dates with sales regardless of the current filter context. And the current filter context is a date. So one is returned only when there are actually sales. So that is better computed. If I use a calculate table, values of sales order date, I can use all selected. To restore the original filter context and that should return the same value everywhere 154 so i have 1461 dates in the entire set but the selected one are only 154 which looks like a small number because i selected only one year if i get rid of this i have a larger number that has all the dates containing sales that is a slightly better so now i have my two sets I have the reference date and I have all the dates. I can use these two sets to subtract from all the dates, the dates with sales. And we do have a DAX function that does it. Uh, so let's call it, create a new variable, holes or dates with no sales. And I can just use except. I get read from all the dates of the dates with no sales. This returns a table that contains only the dates that do not have any sales. We count what is there, and that should be 1307. Again, the, the number is meaningful enough that we consider it correct. The last step is that we need to find the nearest hole. Now, what do we mean by nearest? Nearest means uh, the last hole before the current date. So I can start iterating and scanning my uh, dates with no sales table, searching for the maximum data with no sales, because it belongs to the table, that is less or equal than the current date. So again, that is a variable. Let's call it nearest whole. That is a max x over dates with no sales. And then I need to add a condition that is uh, that the date date is less or equal than the reference date. 
this is not a max x, it's max x over a filter. Dates with no saves where date is less or equal than the reference date. And I want the date date column. Let's see if this computes something meaningful. That should be a date. Uh, oh, that's not a count, Rosa, because nearest hole is a date. Now, nearest hole shows the 7th of December here. So I'm on the 8th of December, and they show the 7th, which is fine. Now, on the 6th, it shows the 4th, which is fine. It's the nearest hole. So my days with says computes the nearest hole. And finally, the result is just the subtraction the subtraction from uh, the reference data that is the current data i remove the nearest hole <coughs> and let's cast it as an integer just to be sure return result and if i did it, everything correctly that should be it so it shows zero here one two then it goes to zero again, one, two, then one, two, three, four, and so on. And it only goes on counting as long as the sequence contains only the dates. If I have all zero, that's not interesting, but if I have uh, no filter, therefore I have a lot of values, you see that the sequence starts with one, reaches 13, then resets, and then start counting again until it reaches six. Now, it's worth spending just a few seconds understanding whether this code uh, is going to be fast or it might be slow. Now, this is extremely simple. This is just metadata, it just computes all the date. This needs to compute the values of says order data. The speed depends on the cardinality of order data, which contains a small number of values. It can be a few thousands of values also in a large database. Except is not a fast function, except is slow, but except need to work on a table containing all the dates, a few thousand rows, and another table containing a few thousand rows. So there's nothing complex here. And most important, these three lines do not depend on the current selection. They are always the same value, so they will be computed once and forever. Then this max x iterates over a table with a few thousand rows, so again, that should not be extremely slow. Therefore, we can consider the, the measure fast enough to work also on uh, quite large databases. As you have seen, once you have an idea of the algorithm, writing DAX code is not that hard. Uh, the solution is very different from what I did to find the holes. If you take a look at the previous video, the algorithm we used to count the number of days with no says is completely different than the algorithm that we use to count the number of days with sales. To be honest, I have no idea whether the two measures uh, can be comparable, which one is faster, and if the technique used in one can be actually used in the other one. But overall, this is a simple solution to quite a common problem, that is finding sequences of dates where a given measure has, all, has a number that is different than zero, or in general, there is some condition that is specific. It can be the temperature of an engine, it can be whatever, the technique is always the same. Enjoy, Ducks.